In Creo Parametric 9.0, the workflows for placing and editing surface finishes have been completely overhauled. For context, let's start out in Creo Parametric 8.0. Here I am in a part model. I will do this with model-based definition. Back in that version and earlier, if you wanted to create a surface finish, you could go to the Annotate tab. Here is the surface finish command. When you clicked on that, it would open up the file open dialog box to the folder of your various different symbols. You can see that we've got unmachined, there are a couple choices in here, machined, a couple choices in there, and then we have our generic option. Let me grab the standard symbol. Then this would open up the surface finish dialog box where you have three different tabs. For example, we have the general tab, I can choose my model references. Then for my placement type, we have a drop down list and I can say, hey, let's do this with leaders and I can select the surface and then middle mouse button to locate it. Then we've got properties for the height. And so this is one of the tabs. Then I can go to the grouping tab. If there are different options available from grouping, I can configure them from this tab. And then we have the variable text tab. And here you can configure your various different values for any different fields for your surface finish symbols. But you have three different tabs that you have to go between in order to configure your symbol. Let's click the OK button. So that's how you would do it in Creo Parametric 8.0 and earlier. Let's take a look now at Creo 9.0. All right, here I am in Creo Parametric 9.0. Let's click on the Annotate tab, and then we can find the Surface Finish command in the same place. You'll notice we have a brand new interface. We now have a tab that we can use for configuring our symbol. First, we see on the left-hand side, we have a gallery dropdown. And just like how custom symbols were updated in Creo 8 to use a gallery, same thing for your surface finishes in Creo 9. Up at the top, you have a little search bar that you can use for looking for certain symbols if you know their name. We have the ability to expand all and collapse all, and then a drop down list where we can choose how we want to display the gallery. You have small thumbnails, large thumbnails, small thumbnails with names our large thumbnails with names or names only. Let's go back to the small thumbnails. And we have our recent symbols of the top. You can collapse these different ones. I'm gonna jump down a little bit. Here we have our generic symbols, just like in Creo 8 and earlier, the machine symbols and the unmachined symbols. But there are three new symbols that you have available to you in Creo Parametric 9.0. We have an ASME Y14-36-2018 surface finish symbol. We also have the ISO 1302-2002 and the ISO 25178-2016 symbol. Let's go to the SME symbol and I selected it. Be aware you also have a browse surface finish symbols button that allows you to navigate on your computer to the symbol that you want to place. At the bottom of the gallery, you have a command for doing the same as well. But now we have a surface finish command on our tab. Let me click on this and I'll open up a single tab that you can use to configure your surface finish. There's no longer that dialog box where you have to jump between the three different tabs to configure the grouping and the variable text. Okay, so let's see the different options that we have in here. First off, I can expand this one and we can see that for the lines in here, you can choose if you want to have two lines of requirements or if you want to have three lines of requirements, four lines of requirements, or up to five lines of requirements. I don't want to configure all these. Let's go to three lines of requirements. And when I choose three line requirements, here we have different drop down lists for the variable text. And so here I have the drop down list and I can say, hey, let's use this for the first line. I'll be honest, I don't know anything about welding, so I'm just choosing these at random. These could be completely incorrect. If you're a welding expert, you might say, wow, Dave doesn't know anything about welding. And you would be absolutely right. 
Okay, let's take a look in here. Then we have the manufacturing line. And this basically allows you to configure how long will this line be over your variable text. If I choose 50, ah, that looks a little too short. Let's do 90. Looks like I need a little bit higher to cover everything in here. Let's use the max 120. And we can collapse that. Then we have a surface finish modifier. So you could use all around or all over and then additional processing notes and when i check that box again we have more variable text so maybe instead of mill i want to choose instead that this could be turn and then say nope let's go back to mill and then you can see your other surface texture requirements that i configured earlier and so scroll down in here, then we have other different ones like for our material. We can specify whether it's removed, not removed, or unspecified. Let's go with the removed symbol. Then we have lay and orientation. So you can see parallel, perpendicular, and the variety of different options in here that you can configure. And then specify if this should have a leader line or not. Here we have checked the leader line. And let me collapse that for a moment. You can always bring it back open. There is a drop down list where you have the ability to customize the symbol definition name. I'm not going to do that. Here is the angle and the height. This used to be on the first tab of the surface finish symbol dialog box and so if i want to make this a bigger size i can choose this is going to be a size of 10. And by the way when i move my mouse over the screen you can see a preview of it as it would appear in my graphics area on the current active annotation plane and i can say oh you know what that's a little too big let's make this a little bit smaller maybe size of eight and it updates the preview immediately in the graphics window. All right, so now we can select on the geometry where you want it to be. And by the way, you can see that as I'm moving it around over here, it's automatically adjusting the orientation of the note relative to the geometry. Let's position up here where I want it to be. And then I can middle mouse click in order to locate it and when i located it it automatically went into the editing mode and i'm going to show that one in the next video so you'll see that we have a slightly different tab here for editing our surface finish symbol so for example i'll show how to configure the references and change the arrow style and so forth but now we are in the editing mode let me deselect in order to let go of it and another thing i want to show from the surface finish command i will click on it when you are creating your surface finish there is a repeat mode available so you can quickly create multiple symbols at one time so there you see the new interface for placing a surface finish symbol. In the next video, we will take a look at some of the new Creo 9 options for editing your surface finish symbols.